Hi friends, welcome to another class on Caesar and Cleopatra. Just to recapitulate our last class, in the last scene, we found Cleopatra running out of her palace quite anxiously near the quay that is the small harbor where boats come and carry passengers. Now when she reached the beach she found Fatatita, Apollodorus, the I mean, of course, the sentinel, the porters carrying the carpet. Now, as soon as she reached the beach, she asked the Fatitita for a boat. So she wanted to go somewhere. But Fatitita mildly scolds her, saying, that a queen must not travel in a boat. A boat is meant for common people only. So a queen's vessel must be a royal barge. But Cleopatra was in a hurry. She wanted to reach somewhere so she cannot wait for the royal barge to arrive. So she insisted on going by boat. And then Apollodorus tries to introduce himself to her. And uh, she also, he also invites her attention to the carpets. But the queen was neither interested in Apollodorus nor in the carpets. Now Apollodorus then tries to um, intervene in the situation by saying, after all, she is a queen. And when a queen travels in a boat, that boat will be automatically transformed into a royal barge and uh, she is very happy with this flattery of Apollodorus. And Apollodorus calls for a boat. The boat arrives and then asks Apollodorus to row the boat to which Apollodorus agrees. And, uh, Apollodorus is always obedient, always ready to serve a lady, uh, just like uh, we are reminded of uh, the knights of King Arthur, who were renowned for their chivalry. So Apollodorus calls for the boat, the boat arrives, and then Cleopatra asks him, uh, to row the boat, she tells him, please take me to the lighthouse. The moment the word the lighthouse is uttered, the sentinel who was within the uh, hearing distance of Cleopatra, of course, hears this and he is alerted to action. He tells Cleopatra, Madam, you cannot go to the lighthouse. She asks, Why? I am the queen. And he says, Even if you are the queen, you cannot. Because Caesar has given express orders that nobody should be allowed to go to the lighthouse. 
and that order is applicable to you also. She is very much angry because she is the queen and she doesn't have the freedom to move around. She is in a very defiant mood and then our Apollodorus again intervenes. He challenges the sentinel. Uh, and the sentinel says, sorry, I am doing my duty. But Apollodorus challenges him to a fight. But the sentinel is not ready this time for a fight. Instead, he calls for help. And uh, the centurion again appears. And the centurion tells bluntly to Cleopatra that the situation is such that we cannot let anybody go to the lighthouse because Caesar has prohibited it. And if you want to go to the lighthouse, you must get express orders from Caesar. And there is no way to get an express order from Caesar because Caesar is far away, uh, busy in the lighthouse. Now, Apollodorus again finds a solution to this. He says, Madam, don't worry. I will go to the lighthouse because Apollodorus is a Sicilian, not an Egyptian. The order is not binding on him. So he says, I will go to the lighthouse, meet Caesar, and maybe even give him a gift or two and uh, get an express order for you. Cleopatra is very happy about this and the centurion also agrees to this. Now, what gift will Cleopatra give to Caesar? Because there is no time. Time is very limited. And she is in a hurry to go to the lighthouse and meet Caesar. And we may, one may wonder why she is in a hurry to meet Caesar. There are two probable reasons. Reason number one, she feels very insecure in her palace. Because the situation is, situation in Egypt is getting volatile minute by minute and she does not trust anybody around her except perhaps maybe for fatality. Reason number two may be that uh, after all there is some love, some romance between herself and Julius Caesar. And it has been quite some time since Caesar left her. So it's a lover's yearning to meet the person whom she loves. In any case, uh, she agrees to this proposal by Apollodorus. Now the question is, what will be the gift Neapolodorus offers one of his precious carpets as a gift that can be given to Caesar. So things are arranged. Now Fatatita, Cleopatra and the porters carrying the three carpets, they go into the palace. And after some time, we see them exiting the palace. But this time, Cleopatra is missing. What happened to her? We'll see later. Only Fatatita and the porters carrying a heavy carpet. Now, as soon as they reach the key, Theo Apollodorus is waiting there with the boat. The 
Carpet is loaded into the port under the supervision of Fatatita and uh, Apollodorus. And Apollo, uh, Fatatita makes an official statement about the contents of the carpet. This is what she says. She tells Apollodorus, Apollodorus, this carpet is Cleopatra's present to Caesar. It has rolled up in it ten precious goblets of the thinnest Iberian crystal and a hundred eggs of the sacred blue pigeon. On your honor, let not one of them be broken. So this is what the carpet contains. Ten goblets. Very, a goblet is a small cup used to drink wine from. And uh, ten precious goblets, very delicate goblets from Iberia. Hundred blue, sacred blue pigeons eggs. So when she says sacred, you must understand that it must be some mythical, uh, must be some pigeon that the Egyptians worship. Maybe even a mythical bird. Of course, it is possible to see, find blue pigeons. But this pigeon is sacred. Now, she makes the statement to Apollodorus so that the guard on duty can also hear this. So the everything is above suspicion. Now the and she also gives while the carpet is being loaded into the boat, she gives instructions to the porters that the carpet should be handled with the utmost care. So it is loaded into the boat and uh, the boat, Apollodorus, the boat slowly moves away from the quay. Apollodorus is very jubilant. He even starts to sing a song, a boatman's song. My heart, my heart, be whole and free. Love is thine only enemy. A very beautiful song it seems. By the way, I used to sing songs to my students just to get them into the mood. In Shaw's place, songs have their own importance. Shaw, Shaw's mother was actually a teacher of music and Shaw inherited this taste for music from his mother. So we have the song here and uh, Apollodorus is singing that song. Apollodorus is very relaxed but there is a person who is very tense. Can you tell me who that person is? It's our Cleopatra. Where is she? She is in that rolled up carpet. And we can imagine her anxiety, her ten mental tension. And this is why she earlier asked a few questions to Apollodorus about how the carpet will be handled and uh, 
she had got a word of honor from apollodorus that it will be handled in the safest manner and the apollodorus is a young man who keeps his word unlike uh, maybe many of our young men today am i right not sure anyway so the boat moves away now our fatatita anxious fatatita who is on tender hooks is watching the boat moving away then she does something very foolish she prays to the gods to make her queen's journey safe this prayer was she said this prayer loudly so that the sentinel who was standing quite near could hear this and immediately the sentinel was alerted into action he said who is there in that boat is it the queen and then he calls over the sea to the boat stop 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 but the boat is already moved quite far away and in addition to that our apollodorus is singing so the boatman cannot hear the call by the sentinel in any case the boat has already left and the sentinel attempt to stop the boat is fruitless so we'll stop the class here and uh, meet again in the next class my heart my heart be whole and free love is thy only enemy so until then goodbye